morning everyone and welcome back oscar and i mummy moon we are gutter shopping uh, or we're having a look we're just getting the idea of prices what we can and what we can't do at home all around the barns and the house we've they used not we they used before we moved over um all plastic and the problem is with the sun uh yeah weather movement um, and any other factors especially round the horses with down pipes if they get a knock or a bump or anything they're not that durable they look really good um, but yeah they've just not been durable over here so we're looking at going for zinc or the metal guttering uh, which is really good um, if we do do any big structural alterations it's no problem we can just demount it and then reuse it if we need to but if we don't it's going to be there for a very very long time so we're just going to have a look um, have a look at a few brackets and a few fittings and then we're going to go inside it's just started to rain um, so yeah we'll have a little look around what else they've got um, that we might be needing to uh, carry on with the renovations Okay, so we made it to the hose pipe section. We are now in deliberations. Um, actually, we've been for about 40 minutes and we have made a decision because as we walk down here, we've got the hoses, as you can see, even Oscar's had enough of looking at hoses. We've got more hoses. And then we get to the reels, the manual reels, which you have on the floor or the little automatic ones. And then we get to the foot, like the automatic bit, and you can see up there um, what they are. We have had those. Um, practically, they're okay if the environment's clean. As you know, we do have a bit of mud and stuff, and it's a horse yard. So what we're going to go for, which is much better, is one of these professional reels. So this nice metal reel on a trolley, when you lift it up, you can hold it on the handle like that it's a bigger hose so it's a better volume it's going to fill the buckets up quicker so that's going to make mummy moon very happy but the most important thing about this little baby is you can wheel it and put it in under cover so when we get those frosts all we need to do is when we finish we'll wrap the tap up unplug it and it can go nice and safe in the tap room or somewhere where it's not going to freeze happy days bring it out the next day and we'll have water good. everyone and welcome back it is round the back of the barn first big job or the one at the top of the very long list is to shore this corner of the barn up what happened was a lot of buildings in france do not have traditional footing so there's nothing dug into the ground they just find a hard bit of ground and they build off that this bit of ground obviously wasn't quite as hard as what they thought so it started to subside which means it's going away we're very kindly donated these acros by our good friend Ryan. Um, he did have them up at his house. He no longer needed them. Um, so we're going to use them just to shore this up. So a good temporary fix until we get more time. And we're going to get the cement mixer and a few bits and pieces to make a proper footing. So just for now, we're going to make it really safe. Let's do it. Okay, so just to illustrate what we're talking about, how far it's subsided or sunk, um, this is the level, this is basically level, and from one side to the other, there's this much. So you're looking over a very short area at that much drop. From one post or one main bit of the barn to the other, it's going to be a good four inches that it's gone down. So we need to shore it up, get ready, and get some really good foundations in. So first job, make it safe. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, 
Okay, Annie the Acro, she's in place. It's all good. She's now just checking uh, if the barn moves. So Mummy Moon was a bit concerned that I was actually going to start winding the barn up. Uh, that wasn't the case. All it is to do is just for safety to check as i say or to limit if it starts to go or if it starts to move any more and we'll be able to um, gauge that on what we've done here so a really good temporary repair just before we get on with the business of getting on doing the big works which is putting some stuff in the ground to give it a good foundation in the meantime mummy moon is going to be well happy i'm going to take you around to the feed room and we're going to just go through some ideas we've got for the new feed room and how it's all going to be and what we want so uh, let's go welcome everyone to what will be the new feed room with hot and cold water we've got the big top loader washing machine we've got a bit of workspace and it's really well placed because it goes straight into which is the back of the tap room so it's a really handy space um, and also in there we have the facility for drying that has got a uh, heated underfloor heating in there which keeps the damp off the tack but it's also good once the rugs are clean we can dry them overnight so it's just a really handy area and also when we go out with the feeds we've only then just got to go round the corner and we're there ready to feed them in the winter is a lot more involved as you've probably seen with wetting the feeds with hot water um, and as the summer comes obviously that's not as uh, necessary but where we are at the moment is the little room at the front of the house which is an old smoking room um, or a smokery above the very big ancient bread oven that sits at the middle or the back of the kitchen so we're going to relocate from there over to here um, and we're going to make this a really special place for all the stuff we need so feed room rug storeroom and utility room for the legends so with your help and your support uh, and it, we can then start putting those things in place and make it a really usable space once again um, it's just another thing which is going to move it all forward and make mummy moon's life and our life my life a lot easier so um let's do it okay i'm just going to introduce another fundamental game changer in the life of the legends when we were back in the uk when mummy moon rescued those 14 ponies one of which is little Liv, um this piece of equipment was just a game changer it saved lives because in these holes it's a bit dusty at the moment but it'll soon glam up when we come to put it in there sits infrared heat lamps and then you've also got the option of blowing so it actually blows that nice warm air around them it's really really good it goes on a cradle and it can be adjusted up and down. We haven't deployed it since we've been here because of funds and because of all the stuff we've been doing. We just haven't been able to do it and it has been missed. Like we said, we're just going to have a nice wash area or a bay where they can stand on a bit of concrete. They can be tied up and they can be pampered. And this is really, really good for their health. And it's something which, to be honest, uh, we, we really, really uh, needed. And a lovely uh, lady in England donated it to us just before we rescued the ponies. I think it was within six months of rescuing the ponies. We set it all up and then of course when the ponies came, the rest is history. It was fantastic. We didn't leave it behind. We took it with us because we knew one day, we hoped and prayed that one day we'd be able to use it and it's looking like that's coming. So exciting times, really looking forward to getting it in and really looking forward to seeing the reactions or the smile on the horses faces because they love it if i show you here this uh, solarium takes 16 of those big red infrared lamps um and they are the edison screws so it's the the screw in bulbs we're going to put a link in <clears throat> for the amazon wish list and thank you again for everyone that's asked and wanted to help because as an example this just this one little thing once we get it organized once we get it up it's going to be really, really good for the horses, as, as we said. And I just want to say on that note, like the lady, the lovely lady that donated this, 
Um, there are other friends of mine and friends of Jenny's, friends of ours that have been over the years. There's Karen and there's Barbara who went out of their way above and beyond to uh, a part of the story of Cantho, which we'll go into on another day. But people like those who really make a difference and we feel overwhelmed with all the support we're getting. But I also feel there's a little bit where people maybe feel forgotten you're never ever forgotten and every single one of you directly or indirectly has made an impact and continues to do so thank you all so much and uh something like this as we say and the people just being so generous and wanting to to do stuff today we went and got a hose a proper hose and that again makes our life easier makes a, a legend's life a lot better so every little helps and every little is continuing to do so thank you all again So there's some more equipment that we brought over from England, which is the rug racks. And they're really simple. They go on brackets, they hang on the wall. And what it means is you can drape them over. If they're wet, it helps dry them, but it keeps them organized and keeps them off the floor. So a really handy thing. More stuff that we brought with us. We tried to bring as much as we possibly could. Uh, we didn't leave anything behind that we couldn't uh, use again. So really really happy and that leads on to we have been asked questions about why we left the uk we did have we were very very lucky we had a beautiful equestrian center which i built and ran with jenny and um my mother and stepfather over many years and it was fantastic it was a dream come true but we needed to move on with the legends and with the charity, with the association. And really it fell on us that my mum and stepfather were of an age where they were retiring and we all made a cooperative family decision to move. Um, and when we looked at our options, France was the ideal place. The amount of land and the amount of lifestyle um, that we could give the horses and give us and the for the children and for the family, it all just made sense. And more importantly, it meant we were centrally placed within Europe to be able to do what we've done, the Cinderella story, the Ginger story, and we've also been hands-on with Cantho from the UK. So you, you can see we're kind of really well placed um, and it, it all just works. And we're very lucky to have ended up where we are. Um, and also very happy that we're staying here for a bit longer or for the uh, for the foreseeable so um good times ahead <laughs> 